Welcome to today's skill session. Today we're going to talk about base 64. So base 64 is a way to represent data in pure text. Now you might want to convert text into base 64 or you can convert images or videos. And I'll show you how to do it, what it is, how it works, how we work with it, all that stuff in this video. Let's get started. So first of all, base 64 is called base 64 because it basically takes up four bytes of six bits. So here in this example, we've written out man, and if we use ASCII, then that's gonna translate into the bits that you can see underneath it. So the M becomes 01001101, and so on and so forth. So with the letters MAN, we get the bit code that you see down here. Now, when we base 64 and code it, it becomes the letters TWFU that you can see underneath it. So the reason why it becomes four letters instead of three is because normal ASCII notation gives us eight bits per letter. Base 64 uses six bits and it uses them in sets of four. So base six, four. Now, what do we do if we're trying to encode something where the number of letters doesn't add up to three? So if we have something that's one letter, two letters, four letters, five letters, well, we use padding. So in this instance, we only have two letters, but so we have um, the, the letter M and A, and you can see there's eight bits for each of them. But in order to finish up the third character in the base 64 encoding, we pad it with a couple of zeros, and then we have a whole character missing, and we pad that out two equal signs. If you have two equal signs, then that's because there's only enough space to fill up two of the characters in these four. So that's pretty normal, and that's the reason. So let's try some of this out. I've made a completely simple standard HTML setup here with an input and a type of submit. And just uh, as a quick recap, remember when you do a form, you should set the method and the action. So the method is gonna be either get or post, but if you don't set the attribute at all, then the method is gonna be get by default. And the action is gonna be the URL that you're gonna send your form information too, but if you just want to point to the same URL that you're already on, then that's going to be the default value. So for that reason, we don't need to write in the action attribute either. In the input field down here, we don't have to write in the type is text either because that's the type by default. We only have to type in the type on the submit button so that it becomes a button. And that'll enable us to actually make a request with the inputs from the form. So I say, hi, mom, I click submit, it'll say question mark. Now the reason, because it's trying to formulate a get request in the URL up here. So let's try this again, but this time we'll give the input a name. So name equals text, and then we'll give it the same ID because we'll probably need that in a moment anyways. And I'll type in autocomplete off because otherwise it's gonna suggest things that I've written in another input field. So I'll save this, refresh, and I'll type in hi mom submit. And I can see up here it says question mark text equals hi plus mom. So the question mark here means now we're getting into parameters of a get request. If it's a post request, then we won't see these up here. So that's why we're using get right now so everyone can see what's going on. And then we have text, that's the name of, of the input and we have equal signs to the value that was in the input. So let's say now that we want to print this out. So we have a paragraph down here and we are using PHP right now. So we have a shorthand for echoing the content of the super global get array. So get text because that's the name up here, right? So save, I'll hit refresh and it'll make the same request again. And that's why it's saying hi mom down here. Now, if it didn't have anything up here, that would become an error. And we can fix that by simply saying that if there's nothing in here, then just blank. And that means that now I can say hi mom, or I can just say something directly up here, hello. But what if I'm going up here and I'm writing out hi mom? Now we have a problem because a URL doesn't permit a space to be in it. So it replaced that with percentage 20. Now, what if I were to write it down here? Hi, mom. Now it says hi plus mom. Why is that not the same? And what if I say hi space plus space mom? Now it says hi plus percentage 2B plus mom. So it can't really figure out if it's gonna use plus or percentage 2B for a space. And you know, in, in other cases on your own computer, if you're doing this, it might write percentage 20 F or something like that. So that's a little bit problematic. So let's try and base 64 encode this. And we can do this pretty simply. We'll want to print out a base 64 version of the text. And in this script, we'll make a function. We'll call it base 64 and we'll print out the text that it gets. So if we say that it takes an object and we want it to convert the value of that object. So let's say on key up, we'll want to call this function base 64 and we'll want to say this 
That way we get this whole object passed on to the function down here. I want to get my base64 text b64 equals object dot value, but we want to say btoa first because that's the function that JavaScript has to convert text. So we need to put this somewhere so we can see that it's actually working. So let's make another paragraph here and we'll give this one an ID. We'll call it base64. So we can go down here and say document get element by ID base64 dot inner text equals b64. I'll hit save, refresh. And now when I write something, you can see we get these equal signs that I told you when we only have one letter. And as we write more, we get less equal signs. So whatever we write down here is being translated into base 64 back here. So let's translate it back, right? P ID clean. So I'll write out a variable here, clean to translate my base 64 OTAB D64. And once again, this is just the, the function name in JavaScript. And then we'll put the clean uh, text into paragraph here with the ID clean. So document dot get element dot get element by ID clean inner text equals clean. Save this. I'll hit refresh. And when I write something here, semicolon save up over here, click refresh one, two, three, four, five. And now we can see the one, two, three, four, five is translated into this, into this base 64. And this base 64 is then translated back into one, two, three, four, five. And we can do that even with hi plus mom. And you can see that nothing is going to be changed with this. And we could use this in our URL we use for a bunch of other things. But an interesting thing about this is we can also use it to you know, if, if we had a bunch of code in here that we wanted to send and we didn't want it to be interpreted along the way, but we still wanted it to remain code, we can just encode it like this. We can use it for basic auth, which we'll do in another video. We can also use it for, um, for images to convert an image or a video into pure text so that it can be sent over a pure text communication. So we can do that from a form here, or we can do it when we send email attachment. This is normally what you do. And if we want to save our files in the database, we can actually do that using this. So let's try this out. Let's jump in here to our form and say input type equals file. And then we'll give it a name image, an ID image. And then we'll say on change, we will want to add something to this base 64 image. And we'll say this. So that means it's going to call a JavaScript function called base 64 image. And it's going to pass along this whole element with everything that's in it. So we need to create that function function base 64 image and that needs to to get that parameter. So we'll get that as an object like we did before. And then here we'll need to work with a file. So we'll need a file reader var reader equals new file reader. Once we have that, we can take that reader read as data URL parenthesis. But what are we going to going to read? That's going to be our object. And our object is going to contain files. It, that's going to be a list. So we need to select the first one in an array. We do that like this. That's the file that we want to work with. Now we need to make sure that this is finished before we start doing something with it. This can take, you know, a split second. So we'll say reader dot onload equals function. So in that way, we're going to call this anonymous function whenever it's done loading. And in here we'll say document dot get element by ID base 64 dot inner text equals reader dot result. And this automatic outputs base 64. So let's save this, refresh the page. Now we have this button where we can choose a file. So I'll jump in here. And now you can see that it says here data colon image slash PNG semicolon base 64 comma. This part here is just it's just telling us the mime type of what it, this was. So if this was a JPEG, then it would say JPEG down here. And then it tells us that it's base 64. There are other encodings. So that's great. But what can we use this for? This is just a bunch of gibberish. So let's try and put it inside of an image. Let's say we have here an image and it has a source, but that source doesn't exist right now. And then we need an ID for it. So we can, so we'll give the image a style. So it knows that it's going to be 100 pixels by 100 pixels, because otherwise it's going to load the size once the page is loaded. And since the source is not valid, that's going to render an image that has no size. And so the ID here is going to be B64 IMG base 64 image. And let's add the source to that document get element by ID B64 IMG dot source equals reader dot result. So my colon save. Let's jump over here. We'll refresh, choose this file. We go open and we have it here as text and we have it here as a source. And if we open it here in the inspector, we can see that the source is actually base 64. It's not a URL uh, or it's not a path for a file. It's the actual file that goes directly into the source attribute of the image element. Now we can take this base 64 and we can pass it down to the uh, to the PHP part, right? 
So let's do that. Let's do a little bit of base 64 in PHP now that we're at. So we'll take it up here and say, it's fine that we get this file, but we want another input here. Input name equals B64I or base 64 image. ID equals B64I. Say that the B64I value is being set to this. So let's jump over here, hit refresh, choose a file. And we can see there's, an, there's a new, uh, there's a new point sound. And this one, now we have the base 64 in here. So that means we can submit it. So if I hit submit, you can see that it actually becomes part of the URL. Now this doesn't seem to work and perhaps that's because the, uh, the path is just too long. So uh, let's uh, be nice to our browser and uh, use a post method instead. So method equals post. We go, go over here and submit. You can see now that it's gone, but Let's uh, try and just print it out because we were supposed to have that base 64 right here, right? So let's just uh, get it from PHP straight away and say we have it in our post array now. Post B64I. There we go. You can see now it's printing it out with, without us having said anything. So I just resubmit it by refreshing. And now we have it down here and we can do the same here in the source attribute. So just copy this directly onto here, put it into the source attribute. And now you can see that we're actually getting it from PHP. Now let's try this out with some text. Let's just remove this uh, blank just to make it uh, easier to get an overview of. Let's save this, hit refresh, and here it says hi plus mom because that's the last thing tucked in. It actually still comes from the URL up here, right? But if we wanted to print it out as base64, base64 encode, save, and refresh, now PHP is encoding it to base64. This is the PHP equivalent of this one. PHP. In here we have some um, base64 equals base64 encode, get text, semicolon. And by the way, the reason I'm using the get array is because it's still part of the URL. So when you use get, it's going to look at the URL, even though this is actually posted from a post. So if we were to post something new, you'd have to look in the post array instead. But this is going to do that. And down here, we can just say base64. And now it's going to be printed out as base64. Now we can take that base64 and we can clean it up. Say clean equals base64 decode our base64. And then we can put that in a paragraph of its own right under it. Say clean. And then we have the base64 and then we have the clean version so we have it encoded and decoded and of course we can do it back and forth so that we encode it in javascript and decode it in php and so on and so forth one more thing that we can do since we're working with all of this is we can actually try and put an image into our database now so so we have this script right here called database and if we open it up show tables semicolon and it shows us our tables so let's make an image table create table image in here we'll want to say uh, image id in 11 unsigned auto increment primary key comma then we want the actual image image and i'll put medium blob and the reason i'm using medium blob is so that i can get up to 16 megabytes of storage in it tiny blob 255 bytes blob 64 kilobytes medium blob 16 megabytes and long blob to 4 gigabytes describe image we can see that it works and then we can say insert into image parenthesis values so everything works we just need to insert the um the blob so so i'll take this whole line right here and i'll add it now at the end here it's going to give me a couple of line breaks i don't want that but i'll hit submit it doesn't return anything so i'll say select star from image here we go and now it's down here so we actually have an image stored in our database right now and it looks like this and we could of course take that back out of the database and then put it into the source attribute of an image but this is a way to actually control your files without using disk storage and only use database storage so that's base 64 i hope this was helpful and that's going to be all for this skill session